<laughs> Welcome to Egg Money Quilts. I'm Eleanor Burns. In 1930, children were learning to read from the Dick and Jane stories. Oh, everybody loved Dick. Then there was Jane, the big sister, Sally, the little sister, and they had pets. They had Puff the cat and Spot the dog. Well, the pages were filled with colorful characters and large, easy to read type. Well, this book was printed recently by Grosset and Dunlap. In the 1930s, the adults were reading too, and their favorites were the cartoons, especially the ones with Little Abner and Daisy May. Well, Al Cap developed the series. Now, the cartoon's favorite old maid was poor, ugly Sadie Hawkins. She was the daughter of the mayor of their town, Dog Patch. Now, Sadie's daddy really wanted to marry her off, so he declared Sadie Hawkins Day, which was a race where all the unmarried men in Dog Patch would get a 10 minute head start before ugly Sadie and other unmarried women began running after them. Now, the man each woman caught would end up in front of Mary and Sam for a shot gun wedding. Pursuing men just wasn't done in the 1930s. So today we're celebrating Sadie Hawkins Day with Old Maid's Puzzle. Now this is just a charming quilt made with green dot and a plain white fabric. Now this is a variation of the same pattern and it looks like I think like this quilt maker from the 1930s. I see the shadow of the print under this circle. Mmm, secret techniques. Well, these patches look complicated to make, but you'll feel like a spring chicken sewing them together. Join me. This is sampler one, and all of the blocks finish at 12 inches. Well, our Old Maid's Puzzle has three different fabrics in it. We're gonna use pink, blue, and a background. And I just love the way Amy quilted one quarter inch away from all of those curved pieces. Well, this is sampler two. In sampler two, all of the blocks are different sizes. And in Old Maid's Puzzle, this is actually a 24 inch block. It's really, Four blocks sewn into one great big piece. Well, if I was the homeliest gal in the hills and I was just tired of waiting for the guys to come a-courting, I would put on a really cute apron. And I think this crocheted one is pretty cute. Well, I found this newspaper pattern. It's from Alice Brooks. And she calls it a two-patch quilt. And you can see it's definitely Old Maid's Puzzle, but these are the two cardboard templates that I found with a newspaper pattern. A square with this little quarter circle cut out, and then this quarter circle is just a little larger for the quarter inch seam, but there's no way we're going to cut out those two templates. Well, the secret to this pattern is light to medium weight, non-woven, fusible interfacing. Has a smooth side on it, and on the other side it has the dotted fusible side. Well, to start out with, make a four and a half inch circle template. And you could just go ahead and check out a template for your, um, a cover for your butter, if that would fit. Trace around it on the smooth side with a permanent marking pen. And then mark off the quarter marks on the fusible, well fine, you could trace them off, but me, I'm gonna just get them all printed because I can't draw straight lines. This is what it looks like when it's all printed. You need to have four five and a half inch squares with all those circles on them. Now, you need to have two sets of squares and they're the same. The first set is a five and a half inch set, two backgrounds, a blue and a pink. The second set, the squares are all seven and a fourth inches, same thing. Two background, one blue, one pink. Well, I'm gonna start out with the five and a half inch set because these become circles. Take your circle, smooth side up, fusible side, right sides together to the fabric. How about a pin right in the center to hold it? Now you need to sew with a small stitch. 
you need to have 1.8 stitch length. That's small. Now, if you can, reduce the pressure on your presser foot. Now, I can just turn my dial up to about one half, and then I can just sew around those circles as fast as I can. I'm using an open toe applique foot with a metal bottom on it. Now the metal is so that it just zips right over that fusible interfacing. Now all I'm going to do is just sew on the line and if you have needle down, certainly put that needle down right into your work and just sew on the line. You know, Sadie Hawkins Day was first started on November 15th, 1937, and just two years later, oh my gosh, it really caught on because 200 colleges had their own Sadie Hawkins Day. I don't know. I think that was the beginning of the feminist movement. Okay, now, went the whole way around. I overlapped my stitches in the beginning, and now I'm just gonna take a sharp pair of scissors and trim one eighth inch away. Oh, this is TV work. Sit down, do all of your sewing before your favorite program, and then just trim one eighth inch away. Gosh, you could get the whole family to help you out with this, or read the comics while you do this, huh? Okay, take this, get rid of it. Take your sharp scissors and just cut a small hole right in the interfacing, just big enough for you to get your fingers in there, and just pop this whole circle right side out. And then once you have your circle turned, go ahead, run your finger around. Another tool, great tool, is called a point turner. And just run it so you have a smooth circle. Now, so you push the fabric from the inside edge over. Use a wooden iron. Oh, it's just too much fun. Well, now the circle is going to go on the seven and a fourth inch background square. So grab your background square. You've got two of these now. Now, I had quarter marks on my fusible. So I'm going to make quarter marks on this um, background square so that I can match them up. That's just so you line up the grain. You'll see in the next step how useful that's going to be. So fold your background square first, get your quarter marks, and then take the quarter marks on the circle and line them up with your squares. Ooh, perfect. Let me check here. And steam right down there. Give it a shot of steam on the front side. Turn it around and give it a shot of steam on the back side. Looking good. Now, the next step is to sew around the circle. You can do like invisible thread and the blind hem stitch, or you could go ahead and use just like a, an applique stitch. I'm going to use stitch number seven. And I'm using red thread so that you can see it. A little stitch called an applique stitch. Blind hand, applique, whatever. But you take your straight stitches on your background and then take your bite into the circle. And just go right around there. Oh, it's too much fun. Well, I have one that I finished already. And you can see how you just overlap your stitches. Now, I'm going back to those fold lines on the background because I want to cut this in half. And if you actually just look at those fold lines, you'll get it great. Okay, one cut right down through the middle. Turn your ruler, do a second cut, and you actually cut this into four pieces, and it's like four patches in a jiffy. Well, let me go and cut these up. I also have the blue inside of a background, and then I have a background circle on the blue, a background circle on the pink. And with these four combinations, I can do some great things. Let me show you how. All of my patches are cut in force now. I have background and pink, background and blue, and then it's the reverse. Pink and background, blue and background, all cut in force. Now, if you'd like to reduce the bulk, all you have to do is just pull this quarter circle away and trim around that circle. 
and then just get rid of it. Now it's a lot lighter. Well, this block or this patch is also known as Drunkard's Path. Oh, there are so many ways to lay out this patch. For instance, I'm going to take two of these and put them facing each other and then go ahead and take two of the opposite and just put them opposite each other and I've created polka dot. Well, let me lay out some of the other different ways for you to see. And the Old Maid's Puzzle. Well, once you have your block laid out, then divide it into quarters. I'm going to work on just these four pieces right here and sew those together first. Now I always do vertical rows. I always do top to bottom. So you flip the piece on the right over to the piece on the left so you can just sew straight down along there. Well now there's nothing to match in those circles. Isn't that great? I'm using the quarter inch seam but I am matching the outside edges and if you need to just go ahead and match it up with your stiletto. Take the second piece and go right behind it. Lift up the presser foot and sew straight through. Now you can hold those seams down with your stiletto as you stitch across them. Now once you go down, straight down like this, then just open them up, check, make sure you have it all laid out right because you're just going to take this row, flip it right sides together and go the opposite way. At the seam, push the top seam up and the underneath seam down. I always like to do it that way so that I can get locking seams in the next step. Okay, let me line that up, looking good. And hold on to your threads, top seam up. So I like to just open, line up, peek, and just hold it, hold it with my finger, and then flat with the stiletto. And zip right down along there. Now, this is the best technique ever that I'm going to show you. Right here, this is where I have that little connecting thread. Let me just show you if I just cut that connecting thread. And I see those vertical stitches going up and down. Well, if you just unsew those very quickly and then take on the other side, do the same thing. Unsew those vertical stitches because we can lay this flat, wrong side up, and just push the top seam, the top vertical seam to the right and just continue in clockwise direction with your seams. And as you do that, you open up that very center, just mush that in the middle because now you have the seams that swirl around. As you put your quarter parts together, every single quarter part will match. They'll lock together right in those parts. Let's see from the um, right side. This looks good. All right. So now I have all four quarters. And boy, am I fast. You didn't even notice. Oh, I'm going to have to just move these out of the way. Four quarters are already sewn together. Oh my gosh. I don't know how I'm ever going to get that straightened out again. All right. I'm just going to turn my patches. Pink going in like this. Let me grab the two with the blue and lay them out exactly the same. Oh my gosh, this is not easy for a person with dyslexia. I think it looks good. Now, these four are sewn exactly the same way as the other four. And you see right here, when they go across, these seams are actually going to lock. Here the seams are going down and here the seams are going up. And that's the beauty of doing all of those swirling seams and such so that you can get those locking seams. So just line up at the top and just zip right down there. Now I did show you the cutting for just one block in the beginning. Remember if you're making sampler two, you've got to multiply all those pieces by four. Yeah, I just locked it together with my fingers. Pick up the second piece right here, assembly line, sew it one after the other, feed it through, and just roll it back, look at it, lock it. Oh, when it's flat, you know that it's locked. And when you go back across the other way, it's exactly the same. Open it up, check it out. Oh boy, this doesn't have to have the 20 mile roll. That is a pretty good match. 
there and there. So then just take this, flip it the other way, and at this seam, top seam up and underneath seam down. And we can do exactly that same thing, that same swirl. You get it lined up and just lock that first seam in place. Okay, now you do the same thing here in the middle, but I'm just going to show you how to lay out the four blocks. Now, you could do it a couple of different ways. You could take this block and you could turn all of the pink. You could do two pink and two blue. Let's do it like this and you'll see two different patterns because if you do two pinks, two blues, you got one look. That's pretty. I like that. Or if you want, you can put all of the blue or all of the pink into the center. Sew them together and you will have a beautiful old maid's puzzle. Now that you know old maid puzzle is very easy to do, I have another easy one for you. And it's called Double Accent. Oh, look at this. It's nine different colors, a lot of background and quilting around the outside edge. Very similar to Old Maid's Puzzle. Well, I love chickens, and there is no way that I could chop the head off of a chicken. I mean, I would rather just buy cooked chicken in the grocery store. But you know, in the 1930s, the farm women would have to get out there and get those chickens ready for the dinner table. And that's why Double Axe Head is part of Egg Money Quilts. Well, I have this little double ax head quilt and I just love it. It's made from old antique pieces and I actually did it myself. I sewed these pieces together and when I was done sewing the pieces together, I put too thick of a batting in the back, hand quilted it, and you can't even see the stitches. I think I failed on hand quilting. Well, the pieces originally came from Mary Levy. Now, Mary Levy lived in Nebraska, and I think she sent 39 cents to the Needlecraft Company in Augusta, in Augusta, Maine. And these are the die cut pieces that she got. There were actually three different pieces in her little kit. One that looks like the axe head, and then this one that fits right in, and a second one. Well, all of these go in a line like this. This is the outside edge. These are her pieces that she started. Now, let me show you over here on the edge. This piece fits right in here like this. And then this piece here. This already looks like a puzzle, doesn't it? And then the third piece right here gets attached to the axe and this slips right in place. And so it goes. You put all of these pieces together. You know, I actually finished this quilt on my sewing machine. Pretty amazing. Not going to show you anything that complicated at all because my pieces use the fusible interfacing and that quick turn technique. You start out with nine different five inch squares. Nine different five inch squares of a print and you need to have the same size of the fusible interfacing. And you trace three four and a fourth inch circles right on these pieces of fusible interfacing. And then from the remaining six, you just take that bite right out of it and you stitch on the line, just as we did on Old Maid's Puzzle. Then you trim to one eighth inch away and then turn it right side out. So we've got nine pieces all ready to finish up. Well, let me show you the trick because it's really easy to do. I have this uh, master template with the layout of all the nine pieces and I have a 13 inch background square. Now it's actually 13 inches. After we're done stitching them, we'll square it up. Well, I fold it in force already and I put a pin right in the very center just to help me locate the very center on this master pattern. And I can just barely see through to underneath. But this is what you do. First, take your circle. This is a complete circle. You lay it right in the very middle. That's good. And then you take two more circles and you place them right on top, one like that and one down here like this. That's looking easy already. We've got an axe head right in the middle. Now, those six pieces that have the little bite out of them, 
one goes in each corner. And you just follow the pattern, get them all lined up like this. We've got one over here, looking good. And then one right up here. Now, looks kind of funny, but the next part is magical. All I'm going to do is just tip up that very center circle and tuck the one with the bite right under it. Make it nice and close like so. And then the last one of the six, you do exactly the same thing. Tuck it under there and get it all in place. Now once you have it completely arranged, don't have any little holes in it, tuck it all together. Make sure you like it looking good. Then slip your master pattern from underneath. You do need to have a steam iron. And you always go straight down, give it a shot of steam, lift your iron up and down, and just completely steam through each one of those pieces. You know, the yellow is an old feed sack. I love it. I thought the yellow would be really pretty, but you can go ahead and just use the white background if you would like, the light background. I thought, oh, I'll make it look really old fashioned. And then once you have it pressed on the right side, always flip it over and press from the wrong side. Just go down hard. Oh, it's looking great. And then the final step is just to go ahead and use invisible thread. If you would like, you could use the black embroidery floss and do a blanket stitch around each one of these. It'll add a lot of dimension. And that's all that you have to do for the double axe head. I'm always on the lookout for old quilts to show you. So I love to shop in antique stores. I was blown away when I found these Drunkard's Path blocks in a store in Berlin, Ohio, which is Amish country. There's 15 blocks, they're all hand sewn, and they're even nicely made. Well, I couldn't believe my luck to see that they were only $15. And then I realized no one else wanted them because of that old superstition. If a child slept under a drunkard's path quilt, he would grow up to be a drunkard. Well, it's my luck now. There's enough for a twin size quilt. Well, since we're doing circles today, it's a good time to show you my yo-yo quilts. Well, this is the funkiest yo-yo quilt I have ever seen. Well, the maker has her whole life of dresses and aprons tied up in this quilt. Well, first she sewed five inch squares together and then she made three to five yo-yos for each square out of an assortment of fabrics. It's funky but I love it. Well, let's go from funky to elegant. Well, this yo-yo quilt is made from organdy. It's a very fine, filmy fabric they use to make dresses, and I love the scalloped edge. The lady that made this must have been a very classy lady. Now, you can sew yo-yos together in many different configurations because this table cover also looks like grandmother's flower garden with background yo-yo sewn around a yo-yo diamond center. Oh, and that quilt could just go on and on and become bed size. Now, a double row of yo-yos are sewn around this tablecloth and it is just as cute as a button. Well, the yo-yos in this doily are very manageable to do. They start at four and a half inch circles and you can use the same template you use for old maid's puzzle. Now you need one circle in the center, six circles for the inner ring and 12 circles for the outer ring. Now just start out and thread a hand sewing needle with a double strand of thread and knot it and then pull it through thread heaven which is a thread conditioner so the thread doesn't tangle and then from the wrong side you just turn under that raw edge a quarter of an inch and you take big stitches along that fold. Now I call those big ugly stitches and just go around the outside, run a long gathering stitch near that folded edge. Now you can uh, make your own yo-yos. You can figure out your own size just by knowing the uh, finished size. 
multiply that by two, add on your half inch, and that's the size of circle that you cut. Well, once you've gathered it the whole way around, then you just draw it up tight, really tight, mm, and then adjust the gathers on the top side, and then you can knot it on the back just by running your needle through or just knot it on the front. Well, then use your zigzag stitch and sew six together in a long row, sew it around that center yo-yo. And then sew 12 together and sew that right to the inner circle. Put that close and just zigzag stitch around it. Well, don't let superstitions keep you from making these quilts. Enjoy!